Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here. I hope you're having a great day. Today is part eight and we'll be setting up the vSAN ESA in our VMware Workstation 17 building a nested lab. A lot of fun today. All right, so uh, part eight agenda. We're gonna be double checking our uh, networking, uh, how to set up the vSAN ESA, a couple tricks there to show you, especially on uh, nested. Nothing nothing crazy, but just the, the process to do it that actually works. Uh, we're gonna validate that uh, ESA data store capacity and set up its policy. And then we're gonna show you how to enable the vSAN uh, license key as well. All right, so uh, like I said, we're at part eight right now. As you can see, uh, once we get into part nine, which will be performance testing, we'll wrap this series up. All right, so overall series goals, man, we've knocked out so many things from building the nested vSphere 8 clusters and Workstation 17 and, you know, getting Windows 11 set up, right? So much goodness in all these parts. But today we're clearly focused on that vSAN uh, ESA cluster. Okay, so what's important in this is to really know your networking, right? You got to make sure you have this networking set up properly. And that's the first thing the video goes into is covering the networking, how they align to the hosts and those types of things. Once that's done, then it's a matter of just making sure those disks, which are powered by Optane drives, those 1.5s are visible in the uh, actual cluster. And then from there, the next step what we do is we actually create the ESA cluster, uh, set up its policy and things of that nature to get it going. So uh, with that, let's get past the introduction and let's get right into lab. Let's get started in the environment. So all the VMs have been powered on our Active Directory controller, VCSA, and our three ESA, ESA hosts, one, two, and three. Uh, the only changes I've done since last time is I put the hosts in uh, maintenance mode and I remove the uh, actual uh, cluster level. Right now we're at a data center level with just these three VMs, or excuse me, these uh, ESXi hosts in uh, maintenance mode. Uh, one thing you want to do before you start getting set up with ESA is you're going to want to make sure your networking is ready to go. And uh, to do that, you're probably going to want to look at your network diagram. <laughs> in this case, we have three networks we're concerned about is the 10 network, the 11 network, and the 13 network. The 10 network being for uh, ESXi management, such as direct console access, things like that, and also uh, VMs that we're going to run. The 11 network is our ESA network or our backbone for that. And the 13 network is our replication network or for FTV motion, replication, et cetera. Okay. So that has been set up. I've created the uh, everything, the everything switch because everything runs on it. And I created my port groups, the one for the VMs, the one for ESA, the one for management, like VM kernel uh, management traffic, and then the last one for replication. I went ahead and assigned all those uh, different services to those different port groups, uh, the VM kernel for like fault tolerance, et cetera, and then align them to the actual hosts. And if we take a quick peek at look at them, you can see them over here under configure. And then we go down to uh, virtual switches and we can see that our distributed switch is listed there. Let's go ahead and make this full screen a little bit easier to see. Uh, so you can see there's the port group for ESA and when we click on it, it's routing to three and four, which is correct. Management is routing to one and two and the replication uh, VM kernel is going to five and six. Now, one thing you might see here is like, well, hey, what happened to uh, VDS uh, management VMs? It's not listed here. Well, it won't be until you create a VM. So once I create a VM and attach that port group, then it actually shows up here. Now, this next step is setting up uh, ESA, and this is the easiest way that I have found to do it. There are quick start guides for clusters and things like that that all seem to work pretty well, uh, but this pattern seemed to work the best for my nested uh, lab. So I basically go into the data center level and say, actually create a new cluster. And when I do, I say the cluster name. Get over there, here she goes. <laughs> all right, so let's call it nested cluster. Enable vSAN. Enable vSAN ESA. It automatically comes up. And you're ready to take the next step. Now, one step that you should probably do before enabling this is making sure that all your vSAN hosts, this is ESA 1, 2, and 3, all the drives are ready to go. So let's just check that real quick before we uh, do this. So let's go into this host. We're going to go over to configure and storage devices. And what we're looking for are those four 290 NVMe disks that we set up. And sure enough, there they are ready to go to come into that new disk group we're going to create. Okay, so 
Uh, let's go back to here and we'll say new cluster. Again, we'll type in nested cluster. Okay, we're gonna enable vSAN ESA. Okay, we don't need to manage all hosts with a single image because, well, it's not gonna work. <laughs> okay, and click finish. Now it's gonna go through and make this cluster and get it ready to go. And when it's done, all we have to do is bring our hosts into the cluster and get it ready to go. All right, so once it's done uh, getting the cluster going, what you might notice is under nested cluster, okay, so let's make sure we're on that selection. <clears throat> There's a new quick start under configuration. I skipped this part. Um, so if we just choose uh, skip quick start and turn it off, it seems to work with nested environments. It seems to work better doing things manually. Uh, than trying to use the quick start to configure and set up the cluster. That's just what I've found. So I'm going to uh, continue here. And there we go. We've skipped that. So now let's start adding our hosts and simply drag and drop. There goes host one. We can monitor it here. Okay, let's let it get configuration. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in each host one at a time as it's configuring them and getting them ready to go, being patient, allowing this process to complete before bringing in the next host. So we're gonna pause for just a few minutes. Uh, as you can see, it's about 11 o'clock and we'll see how long this process takes. All right, uh, all three hosts are now added to this cluster and it took on average about two to three, maybe four minutes per host to go along and uh, get configured. The next thing we're going to want to do is on our cluster level under configure, we're going to want to go on to vSAN and look at disk management. Okay, we can see that there are three hosts, they are in a healthy state, but none of the disks have been claimed. So we're going to want to do that. We're going to want to claim these uh, unused disks by clicking here and going through this process. When this completes, then we'll actually have a vSAN data store, which will apply a, a policy to as well. All right, so again, they're going to show as incompatible and that's okay. So we see four disks on three hosts. That's what we're looking for. There's no caching tier here. There's nothing like that at all. If we expand this out, it's all flash, right? We want to claim all the disks. Uh, and these are the ones we want to use. So these are all the 290 gig drives that we had. Uh, and you can go through the list. There's a couple pages here if you want to check it out. But basically, there should be four disks uh, per uh, system or per host. So click on create. Okay, It's going to go through its process of getting things ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and let this spin for a while and when we come back we should have a vSAN data store. All right we're ready to go. So now you can see all four hosts are healthy. We're currently in maintenance mode. Capacity is starting to show up and the group is all one which is important. Nothing's partitioned. So let's get out of maintenance mode here on all these hosts. All right, all three hosts have now exited maintenance mode. Let's go over and look at our data store real quick. We can see here is our vSAN data store and its actual uh, given capacity. All right, we've got our capacity back up here and you can see we have a total free space of uh, three terabytes here. Uh, and we're using 380 gigs uh, currently. You may notice down below there are some what if analysis. This is here to help you try to analyze the overall uh, impact of changing policies. So right now I have a vSAN storage uh, to policy here. It shows the effective free space for a new workload would be 1.36 terabyte. And if I change that to ESA uh, policy grade five, you can see now it's gone up to 2.18 terabyte. So that's a little bit better using this particular policy. I can also look at over subscription and, and calculate information, get other information if I want to. Right now, I'm just really concerned about, hey, I've got my uh, data store, I've got my capacity, this is looking good. Uh, I also renamed my local data stores just to make it easy to, to uh, find them when I'm uh, working in the, uh, in the environment. Now, let's go over to configure because we do want to change this policy. We're going to go down to the default uh, vSAN storage policy here, and we're going to change that to the uh, RAID 5 one. All right, so we're going to choose the uh, vSAN ESA 
uh, default policy RAID 5 and choose OK. This should take probably less than a minute or two for it to apply uh, to the system. And there it is, ready to go. Now, uh, one last thing we want to do before we uh, move forward or, or wrap this up is we're going to go back to our cluster. All right. We want to go into, uh, into configure under licensing and vSAN cluster. And as you can see, it's under evaluation license. So you want to make sure in your uh, licensing uh, section, you know, if you go over to, into administration and the licensing, that you have a vSAN uh, license set up. So now if you say assign license, you can come in here and actually choose your vSAN license for this and choose OK. And that will license the actual cluster and you should be good to go. And uh, folks, uh, with that, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this particular uh, session. Uh, you might want to go through and turn on DRS and uh, HA and things like that, make a few other configuration changes as needed. But for now, this is all we needed to do was establish the ESA cluster. Now, next in the next part, we're going to install HCI Benchmark. And then what we'll do is we'll do some performance testing and wrap this particular series up. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you do uh, did enjoy it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And once again, always hit subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.